Hello and welcome to part 2 of modeling latent variables in OpenMX. This video will explain the fit indices that OpenMX calculates to let you know how well your model fits your data. To help answer this question, OpenMX provides four measures of model fit, chi-squared, CFI, TLI, and RMSEA. Each of these fit indices relies on models like the ones you see here. In this case, assume we are modeling four manifest variables. I have omitted the means paths in these models for ease of explanation, but in practice they are still estimated. The model on the left is known as the saturated model. This model is theoretically the best fitting model possible to our data. It is a model where we have modeled all possible covariation in our data set. While accurate, saturated models get very complex very quickly and we would like to simplify that complexity somewhat. On the right we have what is known as an independence model of the same data. This model assumes that there is exactly zero relationship between the variables in our data set. While this model is parsimonious, it is not very likely. The degrees of freedom for these models are calculated as such. We multiply the number of observations in a data set by the number of manifest variables in our model. We then subtract the number of estimated parameters. Let's assume we have 200 observations. Each of these models also has four manifest variables. What each model differs on is the number of estimated parameters. The saturated model has four variance paths, six covariance paths, and four means paths that are not shown here. Thus, the model has 786 degrees of freedom. The independence model has six fewer paths and thus has more degrees of freedom than the saturated model. Any factor model that we make to explain the covariation between these variables should then be somewhere in between. Indeed, the factor model we made in the previous video has degrees of freedom between the saturated and independence model. On top of degrees of freedom differences, these models also differ in their mathematical likelihoods. Theoretically, the saturated model should have the best possible likelihood and the independence model should have the worst. We use these as anchoring points for determining how well our model fits the data. The closer the likelihood of our factor model is to our saturated model, the better the fit. Conversely, the closer the likelihood of our factor model is to the independence model, the worse the fit. Different fit indices attack this problem different ways. The first fit index OpenMX provides is the chi-squared statistic. This is a very simple statistic that first calculates the negative 2 log likelihood of our proposed model as well as its degrees of freedom. It then subtracts these values from the negative 2 log likelihood and degrees of freedom of the saturated model. The resulting values are then run as a chi-squared test with the appropriate degrees of freedom. In this way, the chi-square tests if our proposed factor model is just as likely as the best possible fitting model to the data. If these models indeed have the same likelihoods, then the chi-square value would be zero. The less a factor model is like the saturated model, the higher the chi-square value. Thus, a significant chi-squared value would indicate a poor fit for our model. However, the chi-square statistic has its limitations. Many believe it to be overly stringent. The chi-square statistic is also sensitive to large sample sizes and will almost always be significant given upwards of 300 observations. So, researchers developed other methods of assessing model fit. The first of these fit indices OpenMX provides is the CFI. CFI has two components to its calculations. The first component, which appears in the numerator and denominator of this equation, is derived from a chi-square test between the independence model and the saturated model. The second part is derived from a chi-square test between our proposed factor model and the saturated model. So if the difference in likelihood between the saturated model and the independence model is equal to that of the difference in likelihood of the saturated model and our model, then the top of this equation becomes zero. Thus, CFI is then zero in the worst fitting case. However, if our factor model is just as likely as the saturated model, the value in the red square here tends to zero. Thus, CFI is one. So we want CFI to be as close to one as possible. In practice, CFI values over 0.9 tend to be considered adequate fit. TLI is another fit index that is calculated very similar to CFI. 
Here, instead of subtracting degrees of freedom from the chi-square test between the saturated and independence model, we divide. We do the same with the chi-square test between our proposed factor model and the saturated model. Notice that if this ratio is 1, then the TLI is also 1, because the denominator has a negative 1 here. Thus, if the test of our factor model versus the saturated model has as many chi-square points as degrees of freedom, then TLI shows a good fit, even for significant chi-square values. However, the larger the chi-square value relative to the degrees of freedom, the closer TLI gets to zero. This indicates a poor fit. As with CFI, TLI values greater than 0.9 are considered adequate fit. Finally, we have the RMSEA value. The RMSEA value is calculated using the chi-square difference between our factor model and the saturated model, where n is the number of observations in our dataset. The lower the chi-square value is relative to the degrees of freedom multiplied by n, the lower the value of the RMSEA. However, as the chi-square value approaches the degrees of freedom times n, RMSEA gets closer to 1. For RMSEA, we want lower values. In practice, researchers tend to consider RMSEA values below 0.05 to be indicative of good fit. Now let's get these values in OpenMX. In the previous video, we created this one-factor model, but we do not know how well this model fits the data. To do this, we need both the saturated and independence model for this data. We can do this one of two ways. We could either model these by hand, which could take some time for large models, or we could use this function, mxRefModels. This function takes in a model and creates the appropriate reference models. We can then get a summary of this model, with the RefModels argument being the reference models we just created. And here is our output and fit. We can see that we did not reject the chi-square test, indicating that we have a good model. We can see from the CFI, TLI, and RMSEA that our latent variable model appears to do a good job of explaining the covariation between our manifest variables. We also have a confidence interval for the RMSEA, as well as a significance test for RMSEA less than 0.05. Thank you for watching.